Is it possible to call yourself a patriot while disliking what your government is doing? How can you square that? Today I'll be going over a thread authored by Mike Hobart, and I hope, with his help, I can find a way to answer that question. This thread is titled, Return to Honor Through Bitcoin, A Veteran's Approach, authored by Mike Hobart, and shared by the BTC Therapist. Here we are, the 21st century, the information era. Yet somehow we've lost the capability to discern the difference between man and woman, right and wrong. I don't think that most people have lost the capability to discern the difference between man and woman, right and wrong. I think, actually, most of us absolutely have that ability. But I do believe that there are malicious forces at play trying to make us forget those things, while also losing the simple skills that promote the average citizen of being an efficacious member of society, like critical thinking and being capable of challenging authority. First off, huge props to Mike for using the word efficacious. That is certainly not something that you see in everyday writing. And secondly, yeah, a hundred percent. There are fewer people capable of critical thinking and challenging authority than ever before. Society adopts the values and philosophies that are most strongly incentivized by that of the money with which the individual labors to earn. The harder that money is to earn, the more cherished that which we trade said money for is value. That was a bit of a mouthful, but I'm pretty sure what he's saying there is that if the money that you trade with for your stuff is hard to get, then you're going to think a little bit longer before you start trading that money for said stuff. Which also suggests that said money would be of greater difficulty to fabricate, not necessarily by some intrinsic value, but due to the opportunity cost of attempting to cheat something that is so difficult to earn in the first place. Now, if that money is also of extreme difficulty to copy or fabricate, all the better. However, what this does mean is that there will be greater attempts to produce legislature and social agreements to make said money easier to produce. This is where we segue. It makes perfect sense. If the rules of the game are such that playing by the rules means you're going to have to do some difficult things to get the rewards from the game, well, there's going to be some people that don't want to play by those rules because they don't want to work hard. They want to chill and skate on by and make sure other people do the work. And that's just kind of how it is in the world. I'm not sure the saying of don't hate the player, hate the game works here. Because so many things are corrupt in this entire ecosystem, from the game to the pieces to the players, it's all just a big monetary mess. We live in a time of easy money and monetary policy. We can blather on about interest rates and the Fed, but America's unproductive class is still electing to send hundreds of billions in equipment and funding to support an armed conflict that is not on our shores. The U.S. sent $113 billion in aid to Ukraine. It is impossible to send this much aid this fast into war-torn Ukraine without waste, fraud, and abuse. Yet we are told by departmental inspector generals that they have not substantiated any cases of fraud. That is not good news. Zero cases means our oversight is failing. The pillaging of Americans' pockets to pay for things going on over on the other side of the world is absolutely scandalous. We should be directing power internally. As I read through the next couple of sections, I want you to see what I've got playing on screen and think, oh yeah, this is happening in this country, the United States of America, right now in most major cities. We should be directing power internally. Have you seen the ten cities? Have you seen the videos of droves of individuals with drug addictions shooting up in broad daylight on the street? Remember the opiate problem and the illegal prescription drug trade? Or how about Flint, Michigan? They still don't have clean water. Or how about the dilapidated city of Detroit, once a beacon of American industry rotting? And let's not forget about East Palestine, Ohio, which many of you clearly have forgotten about. Are our hundreds of billions not better suited to our own citizens, our own neighbors? Did you vote for our tax dollars to go towards these initiatives? Here's the stinger. You and I technically did by voting for the individuals to get into office that are allowing such 
asinine decisions, but not necessarily as an asset. It is the behaviors that an asset like Bitcoin incentivizes in the average citizen. By working as a savings vehicle that allows for wealth accumulation that can be spitefully stored outside of the reach of physical force and coercion, Americans effectively have access to FU money. This is the beautiful hilarity of the BlackRock development. Mr. Stink can go on camera and virtue signal about the shiny orange future that he sees for Bitcoin, when we have all been arguing for many years now, while being laughed out of every room and conversation, mind you. In doing so, Mr. Twink is inadvertently providing a swelling of wealth for those that take self-custody seriously. A wealth that is outside the reach of the claws of the fiat financial machine. If you are new to Bitcoin, you may not have felt the effects of this dynamic yet. But when you experience a swelling in personal wealth that is unlike those of your personal or familial situation, you gain confidence. Confidence in your beliefs and confidence in the lens with which you view the world. This is FU money. You don't have to be a millionaire. Deca millionaire or billionaire to experience this empowering sensation. This allows for the middle and lower classes to stand resolute over the things that they believe, the things that they hold to be true and right, and prevents the political banking system from controlling or influencing what they say or what they purchase. I'm commonly hearing that the middle class is no more, or, or it's greatly reduced. And here, I'm going to read a tweet from RFK Jr. Americans are moving into their vehicles, huge exodus from houses to vans, as property taxes and cost of living skyrockets. Does anybody in Washington, D.C. understand what's happening in America? Workers can't afford to live in this country. We don't have the leave it to Beaver Cleaver's family dynamic anymore where Mr. Cleaver goes off to work, Mrs. Cleaver stays at home and handles the things at home, which is a job in and of itself, mind you. But that is a rarity these days, allowing for the voice of the American to grow louder with each individual slash family that takes back the purchasing power that has been stolen from them through such thievery as monetary debasement, excessive taxation, and 1.5% fees on every card swipe going to the banks. This boils down to a reduction of the coercive techniques that have been deployed in recent history, where average citizens can afford to say no and actually have a voice in the goings-on over their nation. What this also allows for is a return to incentivizing strength, particularly amongst men. Men who work hard, make decisions based upon low time preference, and those who value their reputation over their monetary return. A revitalization of honor and true masculinity when a society can combine these two men with honor, and those same men having strength, a truly strong society, and a right society we have indeed. Men who don't tolerate the nonsensical politics and socially accepted norms of today. Men who don't send our youth off to fight wars simply for the sake of padding their pockets with the lobbyist money of the defense contractors and pharmaceutical companies. This is why I am honored to join my brothers in arms in starting a little project we have named Bitcoin veterans, so that we may discuss these realities and these machinations, to spread the signal and bring more onto the mission of righting the many wrongs of society, starting first with the money and the behaviors of our young men. Join us Wednesdays at 9 p.m. EDT, 8 p.m. CST, and answer the call to duty at Bitcoin Veterans. This brings me full circle to where I started this entire video. Being an American patriot and having the American ideals burning bright in your soul doesn't mean that you agree with everything a politician does or any politician. How, how could that even work? Because you've got Republicans, you've got Democrats, you've got Libertarians, you've got all sorts of different political leanings as it is. It doesn't even make sense to just agree with all of them. That obviously isn't what it means. What it means is what you define it as. And for me, knowing where this country came from, where it was founded, why it was founded, and those guiding principles is what I look to, not where we're at now, with billions of dollars being sent all over the place so that some elected and sometimes unelected officials can line their pockets and go live happily in the Hamptons while millions of others starve or go hungry or worse yet, die. No. That does not make somebody a patriot, agreeing with those things. Actually, you might be way more patriotic if you don't agree with those things.
And for the next leg of your choose your own adventure, you can watch a video by Rustin over here talking about an essay from David Gunn, more on the government control side of things, CBDCs and that sort of deal. Or over here on the left, you can see how India, a totally different country from the United States, is already primed for Bitcoin adoption. Oh, my God.